All right, so I did uh, reverse engineer it. Maybe not all the way, but I re reverse engineered uh, most of this power supply. So the way that I go about reverse engineering supplies is that I, um, uh, I first take a photograph of, uh, of the PC boards. And this one has a nice see-through PC board, so you can see the traces. I've, I, I, I put some light behind it, so I got, I got the traces sort of along the same picture. But what I also do is I take a photograph of the back of the board. Okay, here's the back of the board. But I then take it into a photo editing program, and I flip it, okay, so that the two boards are the same, right? It's like this is the mirror image of the bottom. So they, they, they overlap on each other. Usually one's like looking in a mirror, right? Uh, but I can, I, can, I can look at both. And on this one, I've drawn in a bunch of the, uh, of the components where they go by looking at the top and uh, figuring out things like which way they opt out points and part numbers and everything. So that's the way I go, I go about reverse engineering a schematic. And then uh, the schematic then gives me some information. Uh, so let's zoom down here. And so um, let me get something to point with. Um, so here's the op amps that, that's going to compare a set voltage with the real voltage uh, measured at the terminal. So here's the terminal. Here's the red black terminals. Now the voltage that you want to set is uh, set by this resistor here. Um, and no, it's not that resistor. That's a, that's a calibration resistor. So this this resistor here goes into some Zener diodes and sets a calibration point. There's two uh, resistors here on the front. One sets voltage and one sets current. All right. So this is the one that sets the the voltage and it wraps up back and around. That sets the voltage that you want. And then uh, the, the measured voltage comes into the other side and does compare. And then uh, if it uh, needs more juice, then the op amp goes high, turns on this transistor. This transistor turns on this transistor, which then is, a, is the TO3 can, and it outputs the, the uh, power on the, on, the, on the output. So this is like a, a Darlington here. Um, and then the current is measured through a 0.5 ohm resistor here. This dotted line here is, this is PC board on the left, and this is the rest of the power supply. The front panel and the bulk wiring and everything is on the right-hand side. So here's the meter uh, and the, the TO3 and the two pots in the front. So this is all the stuff on the front. This is the ribbon cable. So the only thing that connects the PC board with the rest of the instrument is that ribbon cable. Yes, that 50 volts at half an amp goes through that little ribbon cable, goes through uh, pins two and four of the ribbon cable. Um, yeah, anyway, and ground goes through, uh, no, ground goes through pins two and four, and the uh, unregulated voltage goes through pins five and, s five and ten. Uh, so this all makes sense. Uh, what doesn't make sense to me is the actual front in here. This uh, a double winding transformer. This sets the the 50 volt supply. This sets some other supply, which then runs into this really weird circuit here that I have not been able to reverse engineer in my head yet. Uh, it's got tons of Zener diodes. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six Zener diodes, all in this one area here. Um, there's a weird chain of, of, of Zener diodes, that one, that one, that one, and that one. If you look at the picture, it's, uh, it's over here, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So what are those? Well, there's a 15 volt, a five volt, a five volt, and a five volt. So, and these three here are just in series. So why didn't they just use a 15 volt and a 15 volt? I don't know. And then what's the 6.8 volt, or the 8.8, .8, this one's 8.8 .8 volt Zener here. What's that one doing in there? And then there's this one down here, which is a 10 volt Zener. So yeah, all kinds of weird stuff going on.
Okay, so anyway, it, it sets up some voltages and it sets up the, uh, this voltage here, which is I'm calling V plus A, and this is V minus A. And those are the two voltages that run the op amp. So the op amp is being run off of, um, the plus and minus excursion is 28 volts. So this, this uh, is an LM709 being run at 28 volts. It's, and here's a 709, very old part. Uh, I don't have the rest of the data sheet, but I'm hoping it's good for 28 volts. Um, and uh, so it has external compensation and stuff on it. All right, so anyway, there you go. So every time I measured a part on here, it always checked out okay. I did replace all of the capacitors. I did find a, a broken wire on the transformer. So yeah, okay, so some things were broken. Uh, but it just didn't output any voltage. So I was getting this circuit here worked and this circuit here worked. I just wasn't getting any output. Well, so the output of the uh, op amp drives these two transistors to turn on a voltage. But then there's this little transistor in here that can reach in and pull it down and, and stop this one from doing its job. So why is this in here? Well, that's the current compliance. So this is the current knob here. It's measuring the voltage across that 0 0.05. And if the voltage gets too big there, then this transistor turns on and it uh, uh, current limits, it, it crowbars the uh, power supply. So um, I pulled that transistor out. In fact, it's right here and it does test good. Uh, but when I pulled that transistor out, it works. So let me show you that. All right, so let me turn it on and you can see we get some voltage out here. And if I turn the voltage knob, I can set voltages all the way up to 50 volts. Let me turn on my external meter here so we can see that it's actually uh, actually doing something. So 36 volts. Here, I'll set it to 20 volts, 21 volts, yep. And I'll set it to 10 volts. Uh, so, yeah, 11, let's see if I can get that 10 volts. Yeah, so meter reads a little high, but for a power supply like, like this, it's perfectly fine. Um, and there is no adjustment inside to calibrate voltages and stuff like that, so. Um, no, I take that back. I think they're, but not the meter. I'm sorry, not the meter. So yeah, there you go. So it's all working now except for the current knob. And uh, I am putting a little bit of a load on it. There's a, there's a resistor down here, putting a slight load on it. Um, anyway, uh, progress. So now that I have it somewhat working, I need to buy one part. I have a, um, I needed some high voltage capacitors for the supply and I'm limited on those. I have a bunch of these, which are 47 microfarads at 400 volts and I've got a bunch of those. So I used two in this thing. There was uh, a 50, um, yeah, 50 microfarads and a 50 microfarads and I replaced them with 47, close enough. Um, and so I don't have to buy those, but there was a 680, um, and I, I'm, I need to go to the store today and buy a replacement for that one. I have the, I have a 47 in there right now, so obviously not good enough. Um, but for troubleshooting purposes, it was fine. And, uh, once I get that working, then I just need to figure out why that little transistor is turning on when it shouldn't be turning on. Um, it's possible that this potentiometer is not working right, um, or there's a broken wire somewhere. I'm not quite sure yet, but I think it'll be easy, an easy fix to get that working. 